What is up gamers, John Jonah here. Uh, welcome to my very first RuneScape guide. This is about money making, and we are making that money in the player-owned ports. Uh, so before I get things started, I uh, just want to talk to you about a couple requirements that you're going to need in order to do this method effectively. The very first thing you'll need is access to the Shield Province. Uh, this particular method that I'm showing you today only works if you have access to the Shield Province, which means if you are brand new to ports uh, and you just unlocked it, unfortunately this method is not for you. The next thing that you're going to need are some scrolls. Uh, so very first thing, you're going to need uh, the Scrimshaw Vampirism scroll. You're going to need the Eastern Soups. And you're going to need the Death Lotus Hood. Um, because these items, once you craft them, that's where you're going to be making your money. I do also go over a way that you can utilize the uh, Reef Walker's Cape as well as the Sea Singer's Hood. So if you have these scrolls, you will benefit from this added bonus, although they are not required to perform this method. Which means the next thing you're going to need is a workshop. You only need to unlock the first one to uh, be able to craft your items. And I'm pretty sure I don't need to include this in the video. Because if you're on the Shield Province, more likely than not, you have a functional workshop. Now, because of the length of this video, um, I have included timestamps of each individual section that I talk about in the description below. Uh, so if you're coming back to this video, uh, you can just refer to the timestamps below to take you back to a specific section that I, uh, that I talk about. So as you probably guessed, uh, based on the scrolls that you require, uh, we are going to be collecting trade goods, and that's how we're going to be making our money. And the trade goods that you're going to need are the spices, the ancient bones, and the lacquer. Now, as you all know, um, in order to do the player-owned ports, you need level 90 in a particular set of skills to unlock the adventurers. Um, so in order to make money here, you're going to need level 90 in the very first thing is in thieving to obtain the convict who specializes in the lacquer. You're going to need 90 Slayer to get the Assassin, who specializes in Spices, and either 90 Herblore or 90 Prayer for either the Biologist or the Missionary, both of which specialize in the Ancient Bones. Now, the money you will make uh, using this method may vary um, each time you collect your products and that's just simply based on the success of your voyages. Uh, sometimes you might get voyages that are 77 percent which may fail from time to time although the chances are slim uh, and sometimes you'll get voyages that are 85 percent uh, which more often than not succeed. But by the end of this video, I will be collecting my products and selling them in front of you uh, to show you more or less how much you could make uh, once or twice a month. Uh, another requirement is, as you can see in my port, I have four jade statues. And that is something that you will need. Having four jade statues gives you a 10% chance of receiving uh, trade good voyages more often. Uh, and in order to get four jade statues, you're going to need 12,000 jade and 8,000 cherry wood. The next thing I would absolutely recommend, although might not necessarily be required, is having four ships available to you. Having four ships improves the efficiency of this method greatly. And in order to get four ships, you're going to need to upgrade your office to the final stage, which costs 10,000 jade and 8,000 cherry wood. So as it stands right now, you're going to need 22,000 jade, 
and 16,000 cherry wood. Now, like I said, it's not required to have four ships. Uh, if you only have three, you can still do this method. Uh, there is a way around it, and I will get to that in a little bit. The last requirement that I'm going to be talking about are the icon spots. So um, you're going to need uh, the human skull for the assassin. You're going to need uh, the stocks for the convict. And you are either going to need the mammoth head or the ceridominist symbol for either the biologist or the missionary. So now that I talked about uh, all the requirements, I'm going to show you how to set up your ships. Now I'm going to start off by saying you do not need any special crew members such as these ones here. You don't need any of those special guys. Having the standard um, uh, crew members is good enough and it's actually precisely what you need to have. And there's also something to consider within the captains um, in regards to their um, stats as well as their traits. Now in terms of all of my captains, I have not dressed them up properly with their traits as of yet, but there is a way you can do that that would maximize the conditions you need for each of your ships. And I will be going over that uh, in a little while. Uh, so for the very first ship, uh, it's going to be morale based. We want this morale to be as high as possible. So we stick with crew members that are just specifically for morale, uh, as well as a captain who has the greatest stat in morale. As for the ship, we go with the figurehead spire, the fine glow lanterns for both uh, deck items, and the blazing lantern hull. In terms of the rudder, all four ships are going to have the same rudder, which is the Tengu rudder, which is the highest rudder that you can get. Um, if you don't have these items, just go with the best possible morale boosting um, uh, item that you have. For the next ship, it's going to be morale and seafaring. Uh, this is um, more specifically to satisfy the biologist. Um, so for our crew members, we're going to have a captain who's high in morale. Give two members who are morale based and three members who are seafaring based. And then we will put on the figurehead spire, two fine glow lanterns, and the Shimmering Azure Hull, which gives stats in uh, all three conditions. For the third ship, uh, you're going to have Combat and Seafaring as uh, your highest conditions. And this is to satisfy the standard trade good voyages, as well as satisfy the missionary. And it is worth mentioning, if you choose to go with the missionary, you need two of these ships. Um, but you will not need this ship set up. So if you choose to go with the missionary, um, get rid of number two and make two of these ships. Uh, so when it comes to the crew, we have a captain who is greater in seafaring. Uh, we have two combat members and three seafaring members. We also have Ram of the Bladewing, as well as the overwhelmingly large cannons. We have two of them. And we have the Golden Katana Hull. The entire ship is combat. The only place you'll find the seafaring is right here and, and the captain. For the fourth one, um, it is entirely combat. Uh, the ship setup is the exact same as number three. Uh, the only difference comes in the crew members and the captain. Captain is combat based and all of the crew members are combat. 
Now, earlier I mentioned that there was a way you could do this method, albeit less efficiently, using only three ships. Now, in order to do that, you must pick the missionary over the biologist. And when it comes to setting up your ships, you must pick number one setup, pure morale, number four setup, pure combat, and finally number three setup with combat and seafaring, completely eliminating number two. By doing that, you have a way to do this method using only three ships. Now, as I was explaining the requirements, I told you you needed 90 thieving to go for the convict who gives you uh, your lacquer. However, you could instead go with the exile who only requires 90 dungeoneering because he also provides you with lacquer. However, uh, this does not work as nicely because um, the exile will require a ship that is a hundred percent dedicated to seafaring while the convict shares the same setup as the standard voyages requiring only morale which gives you uh, two birds with one stone kind of situation aside from that the convict also has some synergy with the assassin if they are in the port uh, at the same time you get a joint voyage of the convict and assassin which gives you double lacquer when you use ship number four which uh, has a hundred percent dedication to combat the convict also has a chance of creating a joint voyage with the tangu and this voyage gives both lacquer and chi and in real life that joint voyage uh, looks like this and you would use your combat ship to complete this voyage and if successful you can eventually store up enough chi globs to craft the tradable sea singers hood uh, which would mean that you would require uh, the sea singers hood scroll as well which is a good thing because it gives you a fourth avenue where you can potentially make more money now don't get me wrong the appearance of this voyage is extremely rare but as you can see it does happen so whenever it does you want to take advantage of it and send that voyage now I'm going to show you how to effectively go through your voyage list to find the trade good voyages that you need um, now I know this might be kind of overkill and may require no explanation but I want to be thorough now the general rule of thumb when you're going through your voyages is to always prioritize the trade goods over everything else because that's where we're making our money um, and the very first thing you want to do is check your special voyages uh, because these voyages are gone during the daily reset whereas the standard voyages you can actually retain up to three at the end of each day and these are the same three that you will get um, during the daily reset these won't disappear so for our special voyages we have the architect who's giving us port resources and we have the assassin who's giving us our trade good as I said you always want to prioritize the trade good so with this we will give her our combat ship and we will send the voyage off if you happen to find another adventurer who gives you another trade good such as uh, either the ancient bones or the lacquer I would suggest using your other ships to procure them and of course often you will find voyages from other adventurers if you have the level requirements personally I make it my rule to always accept voyages that is going to help you achieve your goal faster in this case the goal being obtain 250 spices and to satisfy the chef here we would use ship number two you may also choose to collect the ship effects 
that the adventurers offer, but I personally have no interest in those. So I tend to stick with the trade goods. If not, if the rest of your adventurers are just like our architect here, you move on to the standard voyages. Here in the standard voyages, we will be going through our list by refreshing each voyage until we find a trade good such as pinching spice here, uh, which offers us our spices. And then we simply select our ship with the same conditions as the voyage, and then we send it forth. Once that one's gone, we continue to refresh our voyages until we find another trade good item. And then we match it with our ship and we send it off. And even though you're on the Shield Province, you may experience some voyages from the Loop Province, uh, such as the spices here. This is typically found when you're exploring uh, the Loop area. Um, this is extremely rare to receive anything other than your Shield Province. But as you can see, it does happen, and we have made arrangements for it. This requires morale, which is uh, ship number one. Now, if it ever comes a time where you have to pick a resource to keep or to get rid of, the priorities are as such. Ancient bones should be your first choice. Spices is your second. And lacquer is your very last. Now, I order it this way based on the amount of money that each trade good is going to make you. Now, if you chose uh, the biologist over the missionary, uh, this next tip is for you. Uh, if you see no spices or ancient bones um, that day that you choose to run your voyages, but you happen to see some koi scales, you may wish to collect those voyages so that they don't go to waste and you can eventually use them to craft the reef walker cape although selling the cape is not lucrative it's better than having a ship docked without a voyage that being said you never prioritize koi scales over the other three trade good items and as you can see uh, the koi scales has the same conditions that the biologist has for her ancient bones voyages. Now to touch back on the captains uh, in terms of their traits, the ship's captains uh, need these three traits that are boxed in red. Uh, each captain has a maximum of four traits that they could have. Now, the first ship with 100% uh, morale condition, um, you want that captain to have all four traits as the leader, which offers 1% total morale. If you have four of them, that's 4% total morale. And 4% of 30,000 is about 1,200, which is a lot. For the second ship, if you choose to go with the biologist setup, which is the morale and seafaring, you're going to need uh, two traits of leader and two traits of seafriend. For the third ship, which is combat and seafaring, uh, same, same kind of thing, you're going to need two tactician, two seafriend. And you probably guessed for the last one, which is 100% combat, you're going to need four tactician traits. If you happen to screw up and give uh, the wrong trait to the wrong captain, uh, you can wait to receive the memory adventurer, who will remove one trait going in order as they appear, but prioritizing any negative traits. So if you have a trait that's like minus 40 seafaring, the memory will get rid of that one first. 
Personally, I'm still working on setting up all of my captains because uh, the way I've set things up, the memory does not come to my port very often, and it is not common to get the trait voyages. So this may take a while, although you can speed things up by having the um, uh, memories uh, icon, which is the butterfly, um, in the hotspots to have her appear more frequently, although it's not possible to affect the frequency of the trait voyages. So it might take you a little while to fully outfit all of your captains. Now, as you can see, the memory requires 7,500 points in all three conditions. So for that reason, I like to keep uh, a few extra crew members uh, just so that I could play around with uh, one of my ships if I ever need to take her voyage. You might not necessarily need to do that. I personally do that because if I didn't, I would be screwing up uh, a lot of my ships. Um, by doing it this way, I only need to screw up one ship. And it could be like the really easy ship, like number one, which is all morale, uh, very easy to reset. So just something to consider if you're thinking about uh, playing around with the traits of the captains, which I highly recommend. Uh, like I said, it will offer you either 1,200 points in uh, one if you go for all four of the same, or 600 points in each if you go for um, two of, of each condition. Now, in this method, when it comes to collecting your products, when you've gathered 250 spices in total, which is the maximum, that is when you go to collect your loot. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sailfish soup. Um, now, you can buy uh, the sailfish already cooked. Uh, buying them cooked is cheaper than buying them raw. Uh, or you could fish them yourself and then cook them yourself. Um, by doing this, you actually you maximize the profits. You, you get 100% of the profit rather than a profit of about 50%. So cook all the sailfish until this value of 250 reaches zero. Now it is worth mentioning that you can obtain uh, your golden rocks and your strange rocks uh, by cooking the sailfish soup. So it might be a good idea to um, empty one inventory slot just in case. Okay, with our sailfish soup now done. The next step is to go over to the Scrimshaw Crafter and start making our Scrimshaw of Vampirism. Go to the tradable ones uh, because that would be a mistake and Scrimshaw of Vampirism and you're gonna need 10 ancient bones for every Scrimshaw so here I'm just gonna make four. Okay and once you're finished with that now we go over to use our lacquer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough lacquer to um, make any Death Lotus hoods, but there is a point that I want to uh, kind of make here, uh, because some of you might say, well, yeah, you can make the hood, which costs uh, uh, 1.2 mil, but you can also make the chest plate, which is worth more. To that I say yes, however, to make the chest plate, you need 80 lacquer. If you have 80 lacquer, instead of making the chest plate, you can actually make two hoods with 20 lacquer saved over. Two hoods equals 2.4 mil, which is much greater than this. Same goes with the Death Lotus Chaps. Uh, you make just a little bit more um, by having 20 extra lacquer. Uh, I just find it not as worth it. Um, the Death Lotus Hood, you get much more bang for your buck. Uh, 200k difference 
for 20 lacquer, in my opinion, is not worth it. I would just stick with the Death Lotus hood. If you keep doing the uh, joint voyages with the Tengu and the Convict, you can save up enough Chi to do the Sea Singer hood, which is roughly the same for the same amount in Chi. Okay, now comes the time to cash in our profits. Uh, and I'm doing this all in front of you guys. There are uh, no camera tricks. I'm not switching anything out. I'm showing you exactly how money is made here. Um, so uh, just before I get started, this is from uh, my last run that I did about two weeks ago. Um, I put the Scrimshaw of Vampirism in. Uh, as you can see, it actually costs two mil. Uh, what I did here was I put it in for 2.2 mil because they are um, in high demand. People do want Scrimshaw of Vampirism, especially for bossing. They are extremely useful. So I put it in for a little bit extra than its price. And if you just wait a little bit and you have the patience, you can make a lot more. So now to show you um, the exact profit that you can make here, uh, I'm going to be um, placing all of my money uh, in my bank and just kind of working with uh, a clean slate here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sailfish soup uh, just in here and I'm actually going to put it for a lot less just to try to sell it quickly and to make a point. So I'm going to put it in like that. And for my scrimshaws I'm also going to put it in just a little bit less. So obviously the profit that I make right now, you're going to make more because I, I already put it in for less than what it's supposed to be. So I collect everything to my inventory and I made 10 mil. Now that's 10 mil in two weeks for doing about two minutes of work each day. Now this is the bare minimum that you will ever get every two to four weeks by doing this method. Now I say two to four weeks, two, two weeks being the absolute minimum and four being the absolute maximum. If all of your voyages are uh, succeeding, you can quickly gain all the trade goods you need within two weeks. If you're kind of having a bad run and a lot of your voyages are failing, it will take you a maximum of four weeks to obtain 250 spices. I guarantee that it will not take more than four weeks. And then once you have your 250 spices, you go and you craft all your products and sell them. And I also will guarantee that the minimum amount of money you will make is 10 mil. Because I didn't get to make any um, Death Lotus hoods and I did that on purpose to show you guys the bare minimum. Had I been able to make some Death Lotus hoods, this may not have been 10 mil, this may have been 12 mil. But I can confidently say that you should always have at least 40 ancient bones for every 250 spices that you collect. And I say this because this was actually my worst run. I have never reached this amount of ancient bones. 40 is probably the lowest I've, I've ever been. Um, because when you collect 250 spices, by the time you collect 250 spices, it's much more common that you should have more ancient bones. So 10 mil every run is probably the lowest amount you could make. And even 10 mil isn't bad at all. So rule of thumb, uh, keep your captain's log on you and never neglect your daily ports voyages. I really hope this uh, money making method uh, has helped you guys. I hope you guys make a lot of money using this method. And if you have any questions or need clarification about anything, please leave me a comment. Um, my Discord is uh, also in the description below. You can find me in Discord uh, and just send me a message there if you prefer. 
Um, I really want to help you guys uh, make some money here and this is the best possible method that I have found in utilizing the player owned ports. So thank you guys for joining me today and I will see you next time.